Okay, great. Thank you all for listening. Um, recently, we took an environmental health innovation class with Dr. Heidkamp at Southern here in Connecticut. And for our term project, he had asked us to individually come up with different uses for kelp and develop a product that could help grow the blue economy um, here in Long Island Sound. So I got to thinking, and for years before I went back to school, um, I worked as a medical assistant in the field of obstetrics and gynecology, and I recall the use of laminaria, um, which is actually a type of compressed kelp that is used for the dilation of the cervix and induction of labor um, for pregnant women. So it has fantastic absorbent properties and is proven safe for vaginal use. So it brought me to the idea of designing a kelp enriched tampon. So upon my research, it was pretty cool. I found out that in the US alone, at least one third of women rely on tampon use during their menstrual cycles. And most of the common brands found on the market today contain many har harmful chemicals and synthetic fibers that can take way longer than a lifetime to decompose. So my kelp tampon is 100% biodegradable and is composed of only two simple ingredients, which are organic cotton and kelp. And this is an environmentally friendly option um, will offer women a convenient, flushable option to reduce waste without the harmful additives that are found in tampons on the market today. So relying on similar properties that, um, you know, we'd be able to find in these medical-based laminaria sticks, the sugar kelp is able to provide an all-natural ingredient with uh, many eco-friendly benefits, making it a very unique product. And I had research that with studies, studies are predicting a 7% annual growth increase in the natural and organic feminine care market. And this kelp on will provide an option to suit health conscious women while avoiding dyes, fragrances, and harmful bleach. This is also for consumers that are looking for a more sustainable product. So I actually did um, kind of get a little nutty and I went on Amazon, ordered some sugar kelp and got some organic cotton um, I looked at some things online, I boiled it, and I found a little concoction, blended it, strained it, and then I actually made a mold and did make a, um, a kelp tampon. Now, whether or not it will truly work or not is another thing, but I, I was able to do it, and it did absorb quite a bit of water. So I thought it was a pretty good start. So I hope to see where it goes, and that's basically what I have so far. Thank you. <clears throat> So I'd invite the panel to uh, ask any questions. Uh, just feel free to jump in. There's no particular order. Uh, I guess I'll start. Um, Larissa, let's pretend that your, your product is on the market and somebody's walking through a grocery store or CVS and yours, I assume, is going to be in a box, right? Correct. So what will the part of the box that's facing the person walking down the aisle say? I would call it kelp on, and then probably kelp enriched tampon. I'm at the very preliminary stages, so we haven't gotten into a design yet. I have thought about it, but right. I want to kind of maybe design it with, um, you know, ocean friendly colors of some aquamarines, blues, and some pieces mm -hmm. of kelp as well. Okay. Good. Yeah. What we're getting at is sort of what is the value proposition? Sort of why should somebody care, right? And you want to get that down to something that people will get in just a few words. That's why I'm telling you, and it's a very skinny series, like, you know, a box about yay big, and that's all they can see. So it's right. not just about the colors and stuff. The words that you chose were interesting. Say that again. Is what? I'm sorry. How did you describe it in words? So it's, it's, a, um, it's a biodegradable tampon with a flushable option, which a, lo which a lot are not. Flushable they, makes they a big are, difference. Yeah. Yeah. yeah over a lifetime to decompose regular tampons. And um, they also create a huge biohazard risk because women are right. having to you know, try to find a disposal. You're in a public restroom, you're anywhere. You don't have a hand sanitizer in that bathroom stall with you. You're making a mess. So it's, it's to be able to be flushable would be fantastic. I don't know what would be approved as flushable, like the percentage of kelp over cotton that would need to be used. But that's something that hopefully in the fall semester, I believe that we'll be trying to get this to fruition and start moving forward with our right. idea. So I, I would be interested to see what I could come up with to make it flushable. Yeah, when you talk about flushable, you're also going to have to deal with septic. There are plenty of people out there that are, have septic systems. So it definitely needs yeah. to biodegrade properly without yeah. killing things. <laughs> that's pretty great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, Jeff, you want to go next? Sure. Uh, great idea. Uh, 
no doubt. I, I, I think you need to think about how you can make this a business. Yeah. All right. Uh, because any business has got to be uh, sustaining uh, so, or self-sustaining. So you need to think about what the, as Dr. Huntley said, what, what's, the, what's the value proposition? Uh, what, what kind of, uh, uh, of how you could scale it, so to speak? Uh, who, who, you, who are you going to sell it to? Not in terms of individuals, but, you know, you got to think about channels, okay? Yeah. Who, will, who, will, who will distribute this for you where, where it won't yeah. cost you much? And right. beyond that, I think you need to think about sponsors. Okay. okay? Versus investors. A uh, sponsor could be an investor too. You never know. But uh, who would sponsor this? Who would think it's such a good idea that they're going to say, hey, we'll, we'll give you a grant. Right. So here's ten thousand dollars. You can go anywhere you want with it. Right. Right. Uh, and it won't cost you any ownership or any no, no strings attached, so to speak. All right. Right. So, uh, yeah, I, I, it's certainly an idea worthwhile pursuing. But at present, it's it, it's and you've done a little work. You made you, you made your own uh, uh, prototype, so to speak. Right. Um, uh, but uh, look, if you're going to get uh, folks interested, you got to understand. Right. You okay. gotta you, you gotta establish this as a business more than, as much as an idea. Okay. That's All right, Kim. So, so as the techie in the group who knows less than nothing about consumer packaged goods. <laughs> okay. Uh, my, I have like three questions, and I think it's a wonderful idea if it works. Number one, what's it cost to make it? Because in a business like that, features don't do you any good. If you're, if people have to pay for it, right. all right. If they can get something at the same price and it's better, they'll buy it. But cost and price matter. Second, I'd love to get some verification on a clinical level that that this is as good as you claim. Mm -hmm. And third, I think if it is, all right. So now I'm. I never saw a glass that wasn't half full. I think that there's a huge opportunity outside the U.S. Yeah. for feminine hygiene and health in parts of the world where it isn't currently available. And having something that can be biodegradable in an environment where people don't have running water and sewers, somebody like the Gates Foundation can be very excited if it actually does what you want it to do. That's my thinking. Wow. But first, it, first, I'm a product guy. You gotta, you, you gotta prove to me that you can make it, that it does what you want it to do, that it has no harmful side effects, and it doesn't extraordinarily more expensive than competitive products that aren't as good. Right. So Larissa, if you had to pick your first uh, vendors, you know, if you, a, a store or something where people would buy this, what would be the first, first outfit you would approach? Where would you want this to sell first? Who's your retailer? So I actually have thought of a few friends. It would be a very small to say mom and pop type shop on the shore. Um, a friend of mine owns a boutique and sells things like that. So I would probably go to her and she has a few sister stores in New Haven. So I was right. thinking that would kind of get the word out. I've spoken to some friends about it. They were really interested, my sisters. So a lot of people keep asking me, have you done anything else with it? We're really interested. We'll definitely try it. So I feel like to start with a smaller might work for me and then word of mouth and just recognition might be good and customer validation might come with that. Yeah, so the big thing is you want to get feedback to make sure that it is actually doing what you promised. That's what he was telling you. And the best way to do that is to talk to real customers. So you probably don't want to start with Whole Foods. Start with somebody small, like you're saying, where you could actually go to the shop. And when somebody pulls your thing off the shelf, try not to stalk them too much, <laughs> but do try to get some data from them. If you can get some real customer validation like that, then you can start going to others. Like they were saying, go to the Gates Foundation or somebody like that. We'll say, hey, look, we hear 200 people that have tried it. Uh, here, here's what they said, basically testimonial kind of thing. Um, maybe you can get some money to pay for the testing. That would be the probably where somebody like the Gates Foundation would really come in. If you have to get it somehow approved by the FDA or something, I don't think you do. But if you did, you'd want to get somebody else to pay for that if you can. Right. Okay. It's going to take some data. Yeah. No, that's fantastic. Thank you. That's amazing. <laughs> you guys have had so many amazing things and suggestions, and it's great to hear this. Yeah. So what does it cost again to make one of these? So 
again, in the very preliminary, preliminary stages of this, we all hypothetically had to come up with numbers and research and go yeah. through. Uh, but um, what I have in my business proposal that I submitted for my term project to Dr. Heidkamp is that it would cost 10, 10 cents per tampon to make. And I could sell for about 90 cents to a dollar each. So the profit margin, if it works out, would be, I, I'm not a business person, but I do watch Shark Tank. So I think it might be okay if it works out. Um, yeah. But I don't know what the overhead would be. Again, everything was a little hypothetical. So it was how much would a facility cost? Yeah. Um, you know, an auger, I'd need a drying rack. I'd need employees. I'd need an attorney. I'd need a lot of people to pay. So I can see how overhead kind of <laughs> gets very expensive and grants and funding can go quickly. Right. Yeah. Okay. You know, you know, I'm just thinking here, um, y you know, if you can find a, um, a health organization that can sponsor this and help you distribute it. What you, what you want to do is, is create and patent whatever your design is, whatever the materials are, if that's possible. Uh, then you can go to somebody who can make it and distribute it for you. And, and, and if, if your profit motive, motive, if you have a profit motive, I, I hope you do. Uh, all you need to do then is collect checks from the mailbox from sales. And you can go on to the next great idea instead of, instead of, instead of running this thing, because there's, there's already sources for like products and manufacturing and so forth. And uh, if, if, if you've got, you know, I'll give you a quick one, which was uh, intermittent windshield wipers. Somebody, somebody had that great idea, but they didn't decide to manufacture cards to, uh, to, to get the device in, or automobiles to get the device into the market. Okay. So th think about, I, I call it a horse to ride. While you're doing all the rest of this, you know, keep an eye out for somebody who uh, may want to uh, partner with you, so to speak. Right. Okay. So you're probably getting more, more, we, uh, we, more we, advice than you really wanted here, but another <laughs> thought. And I know nothing, again, back to knowing nothing about the economics, but back to the underserved world health, all those things. I'll bet the cost to ship this stuff, if you produce it in the U.S., is probably comparable to the cost to produce it. And if you've got something that can be produced locally with locally sourced materials that's safe, effective, cheap, and biodegradable in parts of the world where there's nothing else, that could really be something. Wow. Okay, so uh, Larissa, great job, uh, panelists. Thank you so much. Uh, we've got a lot of great, great ideas there. Thanks for watching. For more information, visit our website at www.futurefrogman.org.